There is one wealth killer that accounts for a big part of your expenses. And today, not only we're we gonna see all the ways to reduce this expense, but even a way to profit from it. Because if we can turn a liability into an asset, that's a real win. You've probably heard already that just three expense categories are responsible for spending almost 50% of your total income. And these are housing, transportation, and food. Now, if you look at this graph, you can see that except for one magic wealth killer, all the other expenses are really hard to reduce. For example, housing. Yeah, it's true that you can reduce housing by living in a smaller apartment, and if you bought a house, you could have bought a smaller one. Yeah, why don't you buy a smaller one, Elon? So, like, what's more important, Mars or a house? I like a house. Okay. But in general, housing costs are strongly dependent on where you live, so there is not so much you can do about it. Same goes for taxes, utilities, food, or healthcare. Of course, I could tell you thousands of ways to reduce these expenses, but the truth is, you're never gonna make a dent. But look at that. Transportation. This is a one wealth killer that we can reduce in so many ways without actually having to make big sacrifices. Now, if I consider everything I see on social media and on the streets, like... I love your car. What do you do for a living? Like, how did you get the car? Our dad bought it for us. We don't work. Our dad bought it for us. We don't work. And you see that many people consider having a beautiful, shiny new car as a status symbol. And probably this is more valid for young people, which by the way are the ones that would profit more than anybody if they invested the money instead of spending it for a car. Right, boys? Now, probably the most alarming news I've read about car spending is that in 2022, more than 15% of consumers who financed a new vehicle in the last quarter committed to spend $1,000 a month or more, the highest it's ever been. And the average annual percentage rate on newly financed vehicles got up to 6.5% per year compared to 4.1% in 2021. If these numbers don't scare you, let me outline for you all the different expenses related to a car. And to do this, we're gonna make an example. According to Model Trend, the Honda Accord is the most popular used car in the US. So I'm gonna take this and use Edmonds.com to calculate the total expenses. Now, what I wanna show you is that the real total cost of ownership, which basically considers all the costs that you're gonna to have to spend for that car for a period of five years is usually almost twice as high as the price you spend to buy the car itself. For the Honda Accord, we're talking about $54,000 spent in five years, which amounts to almost $11,000 per year. So considering that the median personal income in US in 2022 was $54,000, you can see that all things considered, even an Honda Accord would it up to 20% of your total gross income every year. So imagine, just an average modest car like the Honda Accord, it's up to 20% of a total person's income. Imagine how strong the impact is when you buy more expensive cars. And as I always say, it's not just about the cost you have for the car, which is already huge, but it's also the opportunity cost that you're missing, which is all the money that you're not generating in the long term because you decided to spend the money for the car instead of making it productive. But we'll talk about this later. Now let's actually break down the expenses here and how we can reduce them. The first one is already the second highest expense and it's depreciation. Either you're rich and you're able to buy a 4GT like Ram Stefan, or 99% of the time, your car will lose value as time goes on. Car depreciation is one of the biggest reasons why wasting money on a new car or an expensive car is a really bad idea. And that's also the most dangerous expense because for some reason, almost nobody considers it. Like people say, okay, I bought the car, now the expense is in the past, but that's not true. Think about it. If you buy a car for, let's say, $50,000 and you sell it back after five years for $20,000, you spend $30,000 for owning the car for five years. And that's a real expense. If you graph the depreciation of a car within 20 years, you get something like this. And you can see that the younger the car is, the faster it will lose value. Now, different cars are gonna have different curves, but basically the trend is the same. So my first point is that buying a new car is a terrible idea because the moment you drive it out of the dealership, you already lost 10, 15% of the value because now it's a used car. And just after one or two years, you're already 20% down, even though the car is theoretically just as good as new. On the other side, buy a 15 years old car and and you probably won't have to pay much, but you also encounter a lot of repairs and maintenance. So it's actually all about finding the right spot in the middle. And here, everybody has his own idea. Some say three to five years, I would say more like four or seven years, because up to the seventh year, you still see a steep depreciation, but you're still able to find good cars. What I would suggest is to look for cars that have been used mainly over long distances, like in the highway compared to mainly in the city, because this way the engine has been stressed less. And of course, also check the number of miles. And I'd say for a car that is three to five years old, 
you should stay under 50, 70,000 miles. So getting back to the example of the Honda, we have an average depreciation of around $13,000 in five years. That makes almost $2,700 per year or 223 per month. Now the next category is taxes and fees. Considering that every household has an average of two cars, you could potentially cut this expense in half if you just have one car for the family, if it's feasible for you. Now I know everyone wants his own independence and his own car, but consider that cars stay parked on average 95% of the time. So if you don't really need to use all the cars simultaneously, or maybe a family member just uses it for short distances that can be traveled by foot, you do have the option to reduce your family car fleet. Now another thing is the registration fee. Some states require a flat registration fee, but some others charge a fee based on factors like weight of the vehicle, age of the vehicle, or the vehicle's worth. And if you live in Europe, based on the power of the engine. So buying a more modest car will probably also make you save something on that. Okay, the next expense here is financing, and this is the interest expense of a loan. Most people don't have Mr. Beast money to give away. So usually they put maybe 5,000, 7,000 down and get the rest from a loan. And here we're talking about interest rates that go from 4% if you have a wonderful credit score to up to 15%, which is basically like a credit card interest rate. Now these loan interest fees are gonna be super high. So the only suggestion I have for you here is to buy a car as cheap as possible. And we get back to the same suggestion of buying a used car and a modest one. By the way, even if you don't finance your vehicle because maybe you pay upfront with your own money, you should still consider this cost because it reflects the opportunity cost that you're missing because you're spending the money on the vehicle instead of investing it. So maybe you're not paying 7% interest rate on a loan, but you're missing 7% gains from the stock market. All right, the next biggest category here is fuel. Now, Edmunds.com here says $16,756 for five years, assuming that you drive 15,000 miles per year. So we're talking about an average of $3,351 per year or 280 per month. So with the $200 of depreciation that we've seen before, you see how all the expenses add up pretty fast. There is not so much you can do about fuel. I mean, you could use memberships like a Costco membership to fill up cheaper. And they say you can save around $137 per year while paying $60 for the Gold Star membership. But probably the most effective way to reduce this expense is to live as close as possible to where you work. And by the way, this method also reduces repair and maintenance costs. And since the value of a used car is also dependent on the miles driven, you're also gonna have a positive effect on depreciation. All right, after fuel, we got insurance, which is $6,424 on average for this Honda for five years, or about $107 extra per month. There is one thing you can try, and it's trying to get a better rate for your insurance. It's actually pretty effective and you can do it in two ways. One is by calling your own insurance and you can tell them, for example, that you are thinking about changing insurance because of the high prices and you ask if they can give you a better deal. And if that doesn't work, you can still try to shop for other insurances. And the thing is, they're always trying to undercut each other because it's a competitive market. And if you think about it, they don't have so much to differentiate from each other. So they're always trying to offer you either a better price or a better coverage. Moving forward, the next and last costs are repair and maintenance. Now, I come from an island in Italy called Sardinia, and there I've learned the importance of knowing how to handle a car in the cheapest way. Most people use five, 10 year old cars, and just a few of them buy new cars. So you easily grow up in an environment where almost everybody knows how to repair and maintain a car. So what you learn is that the things that happen the most are usually pretty easy to fix. It starts with changing the oil or changing a tire. And by the way, now we have YouTube. So even if you don't have anybody teaching you this, a quick search will give you all the answers. For example, by searching how to change a tire or how to change the oil, you're gonna find short step-by-step -step guides and it looks like this Chris Fix is pretty good on YouTube. So if you think about it, even just changing oil and tires is something that you're gonna have to do so many times in your life that it's actually a good investment to learn how to do it with a 10 or 20 minutes YouTube video instead of having to pay hundreds of dollars every year forever. If you change your oil, for example, every 7,500 miles, or let's say twice a year, and you pay $100 per change, it's already $200 per year only for oil change. Add it up to many other things for which people usually take the car to a shop, and you can see that you can easily save good money here. Another tip I can give you is to drive as uniformly as possible. So for example, don't always accelerate and brake, but instead try to stress the engine as little as possible. Engines love when you drive at constant speed and low RPM. So if you drive better, you're also going to have much less repair and maintenance costs in your car life. This Honda gives an average of $2,962 for repairs 
and 7,318 for maintenance. So we're talking about $10,000 every five years or 170 per month. So as you can see, we're talking about $910 real expense that you have to give away every month for a car. And we didn't take a luxury car, we just took a Honda. We already discussed how to reduce all these expenses as much as possible, but there is one solution that is actually gonna make you save the most. And this is just owning a car. I know that for many people it's not possible. Maybe you live far away from work and there is no public transportation. But if you use a car, despite having the possibility to go to work by foot or using public transportation, then remember that you have the option to save thousands of dollars every year. Maybe you take the metro to work, or maybe you can even think about moving closer to where you work. Because the truth is, we usually use the car to go to work. So if you have the possibility to move to another place, even if it costs like $200 more per month, you still have the possibility to save thousands of dollars every year. And let's not forget that you're also gonna save your nerves. Because having to commute every day for work for long distances is gonna take away your time and also charge you with stress every day. Now, as promised, after discussing how to reduce these expenses, I wanna show you a really important concept that you should always consider before buying a car. I showed you that even an average car costs around $900 per month, if you consider all the expenses. But you might say, Rick, I earn $5,000 per month, so 900 is not actually so bad. Now, there is a concept that everybody should be familiar with, and it's called opportunity cost. This represents not only the real cost that you have, but also the money that you're giving up because you're not using the money in a better way. To show you what I mean, I'm gonna use a Google table that I created that of course I'm gonna make available to you for free through the link in the description below. So let's say that you wanna buy a used Honda and you're gonna have to pay $5,000 upfront and also you're gonna have these $900 expenses per month. Now imagine that instead you decide not to buy the car and to invest all this money in the American stock market and you wanna do it in an easy way. So you decide to invest in the S&P 500 index, for example, through an ETF, then in the last century is given an average return of 10%. Now getting back to the table, if you put $5,000 as initial capital, 10% as rate of return and $900 $100 per month investment, you see that after only 10 years, you already have almost $200,000. And after only 23 years, you will reach a million dollars. If you want to know how to invest like this, check out my channel and you're going to find a lot of videos about this topic. And of course, if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because you're going to make me happy and I'm going to make you happy and rich. All right, but let's say that you don't want to renounce to your car. Let's say that you need it or that you just want it. It's still true that cars remain unused for 95% of the time. So there are some solutions to make it become profitable. And one of them is to turn your own car into a shared car. There are different platforms to do this, but one of the most established is called Get Around. Signing up is easy and you just need to create a profile, upload pictures of your car, and Get Around will reach out to install some proprietary hardware in your car that they will use to let guests unlock the car with their phone. You can actually earn really good money with the platform. There are people that are earning over a thousand dollars from a single car, which if you think about it, will cover all your expenses. And of course, you are covered by full insurance from Get Around for whatever were to happen to your car. Of course, not all of you want to share your own car with other people, but at least you know that there is this option and you can make money out of your own car and still use it yourself in the times that you need it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think with a comment and write me anytime in my socials. I wish you a great day guys and as always I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!